Wonderful. <clears throat> Again, sorry. Um, so, and we can we start the Q and A? You know, how are people doing? What is is there anything challenging? Something that's not clear. Rodas, maybe do you know what if you are there? I think Ramata and Tanana is Tina Katan. Okay. Yeah, so what what is there any challenge? Like um, okay, Michael. Okay, thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, one of the challenges uh, was yesterday. The speed is too much. Like it, it is six hundred kilometers, something like that. Sorry, the distance and the speed is as well exaggerated. Some of the yes, that's distance. an outlier. So that that's most likely. I mean, unless like it's like cross city delivery. Of course, that's. Um, I mean, Nathaniel, you know also the case, this project. Do you remember, was that just some of them are just by mistake? Is that just uh, an outlier? Are the number of fractions of that a lot? Or it's just only a few? Uh, it's, uh, it's a few. So we are, I have found two, two, they will find two, find two kinds of outliers. So for example, for the distance part, they, can, they might find uh, exaggerated distance and also for the speed part they, they might also have find the uh, an exaggerated speed so for example for uh, some long distance the duration when you when they calculate the duration they might uh, get an under 30 seconds or so uh, which makes the speed uh, way way above like 100 or 200 so they just treat those as an outlier so the speed and also the distance okay yeah does that address your question michael okay i'll try that yeah uh, you can just uh, plot it in a scatter uh, plot so you can see where the most of the distribution lies so if you see more uh, when you plot it you will see the distances above 600 or above 100 200 are only a few most of the distances are around like below 100 so just try to understand it by plotting the data anything else Draman. Uh, hello. Uh, um, I have two questions. Uh, first one, uh, wh why may I need uh, the speed? And the second question is, uh, I don't think uh, calculating the speed will be something real because uh, there is another factors like graphics and uh, and uh, rear route the driver would, uh, would take and we calculate the distance by uh, a different way it's uh, I, I don't know how to describe it but uh, the distance between two points directly is not like the real route the driver will take so this will affect uh, the speed calculation and the first question why we all already uh, why you also need to calculate the speed yeah, I mean, it is true. I mean, it's mostly to get the times, the expected time. Was there, you know, it is roughly like, of course, it's, it's going to depend on the traffic and it's going to depend on many number of factors. But at least you will have an average for every one of them. 
assuming that you know the traffic is the same or kind of random then when you calculate it for everyone it compensates it may not tell you the exact speed but it, it helps you to understand what time you know like was that like you know it's much more to get the time the speed is more of to get the time Is that clear, Abdurrahman? Yeah, yeah, that's clear. Uh, sorry, uh, but uh, may, may I can calculate the, the time uh, using the time stamp? So in this way, it's not necessary to calculate the speed, right? The, sorry, the 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 times. I mean, so that is the timestamp you can calculate, but you will not. Yeah, Nathaniel, maybe go. On. Okay, so uh, the main reason why you we need the speed is is just uh, you might find uh, weird distances, and also you might find uh, weird speed. So you under when you see them, now you understand which which data was wrong and which data is not wrong. So the distance is very important here. So, in order to actually understand uh, which which data points are correct, you you, you need to actually extract some features. Like, so, for example, time is the time taken is another feature you have to extract, and also from the date you will extract other features. Like, was it weekend? Was it not weekend? Which affects the speed and also the time. Uh, but for the reason why is the explicit re the explicit reason why we need to calculate is to understand which data is right and which data has an outlier and or, or not so you can't just tell by the time only so for example some drivers might actually uh, finish the whole process so for example there is a process uh, you start the delivery so which means you are on route and when you reach the destination, you finish the route, which means you start at some point in time and you'll finish at some point in time. But we, if you actually do this uh, while uh, after you actually arrive, so for example, you haven't started the trip on your motorbike or, or on the app, but you actually uh, started when you actually finished. So which means you are on at the doorstep of the client and you start the delivery and you immediately finish so you you might find some kind of data there so when you actually uh, try to calculate the speed here you might you might find you might find uh, a high the, the a highest amount or it you will you will find an outlier here so you will understand the data more is that clear uh, yeah yeah it, it makes uh, it makes sense thank you You can speak up, Hilar. No, okay. Um, yeah, good afternoon. Also, uh, for me, concerning the speed and, and the distance, I, I mean, uh, I was saying on the discussion that when you get the difference with, with the latitudes and longitudes, you'll probably have a straight line like in the curves on the surface of the earth, but it, it will not necessarily mean that you you are going to get a, a like the route that the user that the driver went through so is it feasible to even calculate the speed with that and uh, yeah and also for visualization because now uh looking at the visualization for for the example for nyc taxi uh they made the the visualization for the route so uh, is that possible even because um they are using geojson and that one um do, do we need to do that or what can we do for visualization also <clears throat> so the, the first one i probably missed 
So, like, maybe just can you repeat the visualization? I can address, but the, the first one, what is the question? Okay. So, the first thing is it was also concerning the speed. So, when you take the chip start, chip start or origin and distension, if you use that calculate distance, you'll have like more like a straight line uh, yeah. from those two points. So, is it even feasible to calculate the no. I mean, speed with that? No. So, again, that's not correct, right? That's up to you you probably can, that's exactly the point. Using Google Maps, instead of straight line, you can define road calculation, right? So the, just the actual route, you know, you can just give it to Google and you can assume this is driving and you can get, in principle, uh, a, a distance. So yeah, it's so not what, just a straight line. What if there are many routes? Or Sorry? Can... There are many routes, but the optimal one usually Google gives you. Most most likely, also the driver chose that one. Okay. <clears throat> In a way, that's what we do when we drive. So, <clears throat> so that's the one of the case. Okay. Uh, about the visualization, so can we? come up with something like with Google to identify the routes so that we can yes. make visualization for that. Yes, exactly. Okay. So it's connected. So in a way, I think there are tools, Python packages that actually gives you like uh, from the map, they give you just the, you know, the kind of optimal routes given that, you know, so these are not just satellite maps, but these are like the city map. Right, which defines like not you know roads and car roads and motorbike roads and and that. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, yeah, that, that's clear. Thank you. Yeah, uh, Abraham. Yes, thank you. Uh, Google Maps is paid, actually. Sorry? Uh, Google Maps, to access Google Maps. Really yes, can. the API probably is paid, but there are, like, I'm just going to search now. There are going to be a lot that can, I mean. Um... And also, so these are, for example, map quests, web APIs, or projects. So this is one I would just be looking at. But there should be some others, or there are packages that so just just you load you load um, the OpenStreetMap, and then it 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 gives you just the estimate. It may not be accurate as Google but it gives you that. Yeah, Japanese. Okay, uh, my first question is on the uh, location data. There is a latitude and longitude. Uh, I assume that this this uh, this location is the location where the driver was uh, when the uh, order came. Uh, yes. Am I right? Or? I I think that's the case. Maybe not nine. That's the case, right? So it's the location that they accepted, and then there is yeah, it's that one. As far as I know. Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's fine. yeah. Yes, Japanese. Okay, and I assume that the I think I, I talked to Mikhail and we said that the order ID and the trip ID are the same, so that uh, we mapped the two data. So, yeah. for example, some orders can be 
uh, refused by some uh, drivers and uh, at last accepted by another driver which is yeah. found in uh, the first uh, data yeah okay uh, okay and the, my second question is on the uh, uh, cause and correlation uh, i know that that uh, uh, co correlation doesn't mean doesn't mean actually uh, casual or, yeah. or uh, i understand that but when i i tried the casual nix uh, library and uh, i see i see some uh, casual relationship between my uh, variables and it doesn't make sense uh, yeah. so, and so, i'm wondering so, why so that's that's correlation right so that's why like the framework is uh the first part is an expert you you have to have you know it the part that actually the infers the the graph is a very much correlation based it doesn't know what your variables are it has no uh, for actual fact you know right now you could actually do it better by describing each of your your data into you know as a english character you know some some kind of definition and then asking llm to actually do um give you like actually a causal graph that's actually a better version than what they have right because this thing is a lot more like it's not about you know the data only is through correlation it is not it will not give you much more than that so when you construct the causal graph using automated generated causal graph so i would say even a more interesting part would be to use llm you know to describe each of your parameters and tell it like this is the case and da, 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 da. and then you ask it like okay now you know what is the plausible causal graph and that's probably a better way does that make sense yeah, I, I think it makes sense and it is interesting because I I, I haven't have a doubt because how even is that possible to just look at the data only machine yeah, learning? It's, that, that part is just, no, that part is just uh, simply for a start. I mean, nothing serious would be done that way. So the, the usual way is like the, for some, like a lot more of it is expert based and and for some others, you, you would have inference. So the, the first level, maybe the data will give you so that you can think, like it's much more of a prompt and then you complete it. The expert completes it. So I will, yeah. I will explore more on the LLM. Thank you. Yeah, okay, great. Uh, Tena Karami team? Yes, uh, can I ask about this LLM? Um, when you are saying that you can use LLM, are you suggesting that we pass the data to the LLM or are we Not just the describing data. the variables? Yeah, I mean, you don't need the data, right? It doesn't need uh -huh. to know the data, but by describing what the data is about and what are what, what, what are each variables, and it can even suggest that, you know, what variables to consider, you know, so you could really do the data analysis but like even the feature engineering these days there are models like you can go i think there are a lot of models that are actually doing nowadays and a complete automated pre-processing using llms just that mm -hmm. so okay. because but the more you describe about what the data is and what each features are then because it has looked already that kind of thing in the past it, it really knows a lot so yeah so if I think there are, I will share as well, but there are a number of very big companies now developing just pure pre-processing um, using LLMs. So uh, here are we like, uh, just to see if I, I get this. So the, the idea is that we're capitalizing on the, like the knowledge of the LLM because it's like strained on a huge amount of data. So it's like, uh, we are capitalizing on its, its knowledge from yes. like maybe past cases or something like that exactly where yeah it, it's it is it is aware of how people have modeled probably these things in the past and what causes the, the people have commented you know somebody have their notebook in there you know it's like you can think of it it basically has seen everything I so see. So okay. that's what's one of, you know, the reason why we are focusing on generative AI, right? It is because it's no more business as usual. 
it's like the LLMs are becoming, you know, much more than anything. I mean, it's just everything is a language. Humans work. The human's engine works by language, right? It is yeah. just even mathematics is a language. It's just a, a formal language. So in a way, there is nothing that is not a language per se. It's just the uh, abstraction level that's different. So that's why LLMs can be used in a number of ways um, that are novel and combine them with, of course, what they are not strong at, for example, like, yeah, like next week's projects would be exciting as well. For example, next week we will be doing LLMs. I mean, it's, it's not LLMs, but LLMs for time series data, right? Which basically means how do you how do you prompt an LTM normally it's called a LTM or like you know like large time series model um how do you prompt them so you can generate as well just the same as like like you you can give tokens you can tokenize different type of uh time series you know time series is basically just uh, yeah some ups and downs uh, on different grids Right, as long as you can predefine, just like embedding and tokens, that you can predefine a common grid for you know a unit of just like on a either real number or whatever number, it's you know people are working, and so there will be something. So it, it is the same here as well. So the formalism of you know an image, uh, all of modalities at some point are just nothing. Right, it's it's, uh, it's a language faculty that is specializing with different sensors. Yeah, so I, I'm sorry if I leave from taking yeah, more time no, from cool. the Yeah, so it's uh, it's just like for me, it doesn't sound like the connection that uh, from this kind of knowledge and language is not super clear. So um, for me, it's like uh, uh, I'm okay with using LLMs as some kind of black box. So we give it something and gives us an output and then we measure its performance uh with like uh systematically with like uh, testing um but in this case uh, also in this case it's okay because we are just asking us for suggestions for like uh for causal relationships but in general it seems like uh just treating llm as something that knows stuff it seems um i don't know doesn't seem I mean, very <laughs> i mean it, it is not know something it's just you are assuming it has a data and it has learned it's a deep learning network it has learned relationship between two yeah things. but how do we know that it learned it's like um it has to be some kind of like... i mean in a way i mean that's the aspect like the fundamental aspect probably we don't understand but the, that you ask it and it predicts something novel right so that's the aspect in a way i i, I think there is a lot more for me it's true we want to understand the dimension that it is representing is very large so but there is a maybe just a, for a lot of people what is really hard to understand could be dictionary learning that anything in anything whether it's maths or biology you know whether it's dna's or physics these are you know fundamental atoms or any of them they have dictionaries and then there are combinations of those dictionaries that form sentences. And then those sentences form complex objects. So fundamentally, they are all similar, right? In a way, there isn't much difference. Of course, the dimension is huge for even a smaller amount. So when you are saying, if you are doubting about the amount of the dimension, the dimensionality of the world that is so big, how can it? you know, explore efficiently that dimension, I agree. It's all that's why everybody's pushing lots of data so that it can explore the dimension. But also not only that, there is compression in the dimension. So that means, you know, it's like the same as like the whole country's progress is measured by a GDP. That's, that's called compression. You try to reduce to a more like an abstract that's called a representation. So representation learning. There's a lot more about representation in LLMs, right? But uh, the, the, the fact is 
isn't that difficult. You know, it is the dimensionality that's a problem. It, therefore, it is just in dictionary learning, this is a generic, you know, the, sub, the subset of dictionary learning is called Fourier transform. You know, in Fourier transform of a signal, what you are saying is that, okay, I have, if I represent things in science and cosines, and the science and cosines are my vocabularies, then I can represent any signal uh, in any dimension, whether it's two dimensions, three dimension, in that way. So that's one form of very early discovered dictionary, right? Science and cosines provides this. And then there are many other um, wavelets and things that actually are different types of then dictionaries. And this, in general, this is called dictionary learning in the mathematical spaces. So this is, again, a generalized version of dictionary. Now the tokens are, you know, some form of the way that they are written. You know, you have to understand it has seen also machine, machine language, right? It has seen base 64 representations. It has seen binary va values. It has seen many things. So it has also token in those elements as well. So it is not surprising in that sense. But of course, how it does, and the most people don't understand is not that. It's the how, given that the dimension is so huge, how can it find with, with such, a, such a smaller dimensions and smaller training data sets relatively, relative to the world, how did it really do well? How did it generalize? That's the one part we don't understand. Does that make sense, uh, Antina? Yes, it, it does make sense, uh, but it's still like uh, maybe i was a bit skeptical about um like for me it makes sense that uh, like uh, yes this uh llms learn all of this through all of this data that is available to it learns uh, like kind of understands or like learns uh, the information there and can basically give it to us back the thing is that we are usually asking it not for things that is already available, but for yeah, but that's for generalization. That's yeah, for so it's like we, it's an emergent uh, knowledge. It's not just something yeah, that but we are. Think, think, of, think of it as just linear regression. It's like uh, in a linear regression, you know, all you need is two parameters, but there are millions of things it fits. Yeah. Okay. And things that it, it hasn't seen. So. A good a linear regression model doesn't learn just to fit one. It learns to fit to how to fit uh, to a linear regression. So that means a good model doesn't just learn the parameters, but it learns that linear, like, it, you know, deep learnings are like that. It doesn't learn, that's called representation again. It doesn't learn parameters. It learns models of those, you know, that linear regression types like if i do linear regression i can do many things it learns that and then it just then whatever you give it it does linear regression but in its it estimates the parameter in, in itself so it you know it it represents that's the, the difference between deep learning and machine learning is that machine learning you need to give it a representation yourself so that means you have to transform your data and give it in a way and then just only learn correlations within the framework while deep learning, the, the, the unique part of it is just, it learns representation. So it's actually called representation learning. So that means it doesn't, it's not one way it learns, like that's why it's difficult, right? It, it, it even learns how, what it should learn. They are called, you know, features. So it designs its own, you know, whether it should use cosine and sine so that it can transform itself as, Fourier transform, or it should use polynomial decompositions, or that it learns that part, that how to do that in that model, because the model number is large enough, it has enough capacity to, to learn that. So that's why the more we, we give it data and the more we increase the number of parameters, the more it becomes better. All right. Um, okay. So I, I, I would be um, reading more about this. Just to, yes. I think it's, yeah. a, it, you know, let's not pretend we know. Yeah. But, but at the same time, 
we know, I know this is this. yeah this is a very active research i think yeah. i mean the, uh, yeah. i think uh, it's more like this let's not confuse what is not clear yeah but what is actually you know so this one is fine i mean mathematically this is fine this is justifiable what is not clear is the dimension how from almost infinite dimension with such just that it can generalize that's the that's a real question because the space it's learning is very vast just even on a single image there is such a large combination and you know what made it learn faster and converge faster is what we don't understand Okay, so what you're saying that uh, what that it learned we know, but what how it learned is what we don't yes. know. You know, you know what what are the things that we do that really made it learn like this fast? We don't know that. You know, okay. what what are the factors? Like that is that just the momentum, the gradient, or is that the nonlinear uh, transform? You know, we don't know what really why that is the case and. We need to find a way of understanding that because it's a huge space, but it it really is good. It it learned a really it generalizes. So so that's empirical. Empirically, we know it generalizes, uh, and and conceptually, logically, we also understand how it you know that how we learn ourselves and therefore why it's easy. But for us, it is a lot more of we think ourselves special and we still don't understand even ourselves how we understand and then we have invented something that understands and we are trying to find how it understands so that complexity is there but how we learn if you understand how it could learn you could guess okay so uh okay so i will i will thank you thank you for this no, it's good i mean sometimes this type of entertainment are good like in a way these are fundamental questions that still would help a lot more people to learn yeah to yeah to be able to understand that yeah. i would love to have another discussion about this but can you give yeah. me like maybe um if yeah. you could send we, we me something schedule. yes yeah, we can schedule we, yeah no, I just wanted to ask also about like le reading because, material, if possible, okay. or can you give me like uh, something that I can look up, uh, maybe. Yeah. Good. I mean, yeah, it's like just just I've worked in these areas for a while, so that means yeah. that's why it's easier for me to, of course, pick up this, even if it's not deep learning. But in all our like signal analysis is very much the same. You know, in any signal analysis in different mathematical spaces, whether it's S2, different topologies, this basically helps to, you know, people who have worked on, on that um, and is really what they have just jumped on this and capitalized. So I think the, it's, the general name is called dictionary learning. So you could, you could search okay. for dictionary learning. Okay, thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think there were hands. Sorry. I think we took over, but I assume that was good discussion. So I hope it helped some people to frame. Any other question? Down to our chairs as well. So is everything clear? Like, can I get a sense of like, how do people feel about this project? And, you know, it's in almost all the cases, I have a feeling that you are getting exposed to something, slightly different way of thinking, but also you will be able to connect, for example, how we connect it now, because we know now how to do with LLMs, how to, you know, how we do it. So these things are, of course, you're gonna do it again and again and again for the next couple of years and it gets easier now it might not be natural but at least this is the a way that i i would feel people get more excited you know we're not protecting you from all whatever is out there right so sometimes it's much harder than you 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 might think like universities have like curriculums that they don't expose you one thing without exposing to another um 
but I think our case is because that we are not universities, there's no formality, it's about getting exposed as much as you can, so that you know, you get aware, you prepare yourself to get that opportunity, and then once you get that opportunity, then you know how much out is there, and you will learn at work, you will learn, right? So that's the point. So hopefully that's helpful. Any other thing, anything? Um, Michael? Okay, so uh, are we are we using the driver locations uh, data set, right? So yes. So, so that means the one that when they were, so I mean I, I haven't worked on the data, so maybe not now. So the the what we have is the order data and then the locations data, right? And they, yeah. they had more data, but they didn't give us those many things because it was hard for them to pull it out. But the driver's location data, one driver, how often do we have, like, for example, in one trip? Is it just one time or an, a few times? Uh, it's more than one time, like for so the trip. We, 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 we have a certain routes for one driver, uh, kind of approximately. Yeah, I remember, like, there wasn't a specific locations and uh, everything, but one driver, there is a, a definite repetition of option. So that means for one order, you can get a, num a couple of locations? A meaning? Uh, so for one order, let's imagine, like, you have now merged the order. So for one order, how many locations per driver can we get? uh i'm not really sure about the exact yeah. number okay. so any others who were putting hand um you, you may proceed okay. abu Bakr, or I, i've seen some hands ah yes okay uh, so the thing is um the ids yeah the trip ids so those are repeated so for example uh, for uh, for every one delivery or three pi for every one trip id there is there are like much rejected and different uh, drivers assigned to them so it's around one to yeah, twenty. But it's only so that means the driver's data is just only like to tell you more if they accept or reject but not actually on the trip yeah so it's around twenty five thousand. the actual yeah. data so it just repeats, accept, reject, 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 then accept. So around 20 so times not, it would be it's not, on Once it's accepted, that's it. So you will yeah. not see that person's GPS more or less when it arrives. Yeah, that trip ID won't be, well, won't be the show. Okay. So yeah, so then Michael, so you were saying that now you can ask the question. Okay, I, did, I I wasn't finishing the question. Yeah. So so my question is if 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 you are with using the driver locations as uh, for the casual in, inference, the the uh, we are using the reject the accepted ID from the rejection and from that uh, we use the the other data sets. So and can we? use the uh, start, start time in, in the time from that that was my question yeah so uh, i mean i wanted to understand the data formats uh, that's why like <clears throat> before that I, I couldn't get a uh, sense so so the part is like i think we say two normally you have to focus in in two things one is what is my target variable what are you what is your in anything what's your target variable what's your label <clears throat> so on one part, your label, if it is just about, you know, there are failures and how do we, you know, like completion rates, that's if that is your target variable, it's very different from if your target variable is, you know, to explore, for example, the number of rejections by within a distance uh, of one kilometer and five kilometers. So you, you have to look at it from this angle. What's which target variable are you? you know, th there are multiple models you will generate for different target variables. 
So the one target variable is that for one kilometer, within one kilometer, you know, the rejections, um, and the rejections means no one accepted in within one kilometer while they are still there. So that means there is a rejection, but not uh, acceptance. And then within five kilometers. And then the third one, which is what the company wants, is overall, it could be the completion. So now you have three models, not just one model. Does that make sense? So are you suggesting we can we can use both data sets? Uh, yeah, so I mean, for this the, the second data set will help you exactly the target variable, defining the, how do you define the target variable, which is how many rejections, for example, if you are looking at the fraction of within one kilometer rejection to acceptance. So let's imagine that's let's target variable. Is that, is that clear? So it's like you need to use both, otherwise you can't. Yes, so so what I was saying was in the driver's location, the the, the columns are the three start time, three pin time, and, uh, and so on. Sorry, in the second data set, so. Yeah, uh, in the but, order data set. Yeah. So in the trip ID data sets, uh, we have the trip start time and trip in the time and the trip de destination as well. So, so while uh, in the I, driver's uh, case, so like it's uh, while in the driver's case, you have just the driver's reactions for that trip or some trip that whether it has started or not. Yeah, so one driver accepted, like, like we said uh, last when time. When they accept, yes, the start time will, will be there, exactly. So the, the other, like we assume, the other drivers rejected the, the order. Yeah, for that then trip one, ID, one as, far as, as far as I'm, I'm seeing, for that mm -hmm. trip ID, you know who rejected and at which distance they were. Okay, so if if you are uh, formulating the data set, like adding the columns, the we will get the trip trip uh, start time and trip in the time by getting the so ID, the order ID from the accepted, then we, we come back from to this data set. Yes. Yeah. So it's called joining, right? So you join them, and and when you join, like for example, for each of the order. For each of the ordered date rows, you compute how many in one kilometer have rejected, how many in one in one kilometer um, and their five kilometer rejected. And because you know, and then uh, you know what was the driver who accepted if there is. Now you have you have added now three. That's you joined that. So this becomes now your target variables. Is that clear? Yes, but the problem was in the joining part. We'd be like oh, we only have the accepted or the ID, so from that we can get the trip yep. ID but no, no, start you, you, time you, and end time. No, no, like from the accepted for each of the accepted, there are many that haven't accepted for each of them. So, like loop, I mean, in a simple joining, you loop the order. That means the ones that are accepted, right? So that basically, let's call the order table. The order table means anything that was ordered that has started. So how can we suggest, like for example, in the rejected columns, how can we sure be sure that the drivers rejected at this specific time? That, so at, not we, don't at specific, that. we don't know the time, but we know who rejected for that because we know that order ID is the same as in the drivers table also you 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 the id is the same so you can join so you can find for one for one id in the order table you can find all drivers that and their reactions and where they were
Yeah, what I mean is we only have the trip, the location of the driver, so when they reject it, right? So how can we use the other data set? Uh, because we only have the accepted driver, so how can we use that data to the driver no, I mean, to reject? The driver's this? table That's is not just only the accepted. I mean, I think that's what they were saying. Yeah. The driver table is not just only for the accepted. It's also for the reject. So the ones who reject also are in that table. Maybe not now. Yeah. For each uh, trips or orders, you will find, I mean, for each order, you will find one accepted and you might find six rejected or you might find 10 rejected. So now, as uh, mentioned earlier, you can uh, check the distance between the initial lo location order order location and the driver's location so those who rejected and also those who are or also the one who accepted so for example the the ones who rejected were uh, were located two kilometers away from the initial location or the accepted are more on more inside the one one kilometer radius so you, you will find uh, the lists. Yeah, I think so. When you join, just don't expect it's like you will see it's just for every order table, there are multiple associated data points in the order in the driver's data, so which gives you exactly what I was saying. If that is not clear, maybe we can ask them. And, and I think I'm sure some people have already understood, so the Slack could help, but also the tutors can help if that is not clear. Okay, thanks. Yep. Okay. Anything else? Yeah, Thomas, again. Uh, okay, so just to cl clarify what you said for Michael, uh, yeah. in the orders, complete orders table, there. The, there is a, a data for the rejected also? No. The, reject, the rejected drivers? The, no. the, drivers the completed one is just the completed. I mean, so the completed is just the completed. The order table means the order is written when the order is accepted, right? Yes. So that there is just only the accepted data. So that means just that. While the drivers are basically the driver's data, which means when that order came, somebody accepted, we know that, but some did reject. Thank you. So, yeah. Uh, just, Nathaniel, can you take over? I need just to answer a phone. Okay, I can. Uh, go on, Abu Bakr. Okay, so, uh, I had some, uh, actually didn't try it out on uh, our data. I was just exploring and it was, I think it was a student's, uh, yeah, password fail grade day, some, some, something like that. So my question is after we did that, for example, uh, it shows the, the dogs for if, when we, uh, run or do the COSAD index. So um, my, my, my question is, uh, how do we determine it? Maybe I'm, I'm, I didn't get there, but how do we determine uh, how much it is affected? For example, if the driver is five kilometers away to one kilometers away. So how, how do we get that? I just didn't have a sense of, sense of it after the, after we show the direct acyclic graphs. So, for example, uh, now you you can get the driver's distance, right? From uh, drive, the driver location and also from the order ID. So the same order ID in the trip uh, and with the same order ID in the driver's location. So now you compute the distance. So now you have some number. And yeah, basically the distance uh, might affect it, but while you are uh, drawing the graph, you will actually see uh, 
which parts are actually uh, are affecting for the order to be fulfilled. So, for example, you have you can have two parameters here. So, as you have mentioned earlier, you can have uh, the accepted parameter and also the fulfilled parameter. So, what are the actual uh, causalities for an order to be accepted? There is a lot to consider here. The, we, we have a very limited data, data, but based on the data we have, how can we determine for an order to be accepted or not? You can go, you can consider that, and also you can consider how it, uh, what are the causalities between the, the order to be fulfilled and not, not fulfilled, even if it's accepted or not. So for for that part, you can actually uh, go through. Uh, so for uh, the accepted part, you can compute the distance. Based. You can find twenty different distances, and one distance for the accepted one, and twenty different distances for the rejected ones. And you you do this repeatedly, and now you can actually check for. Um, you you will have, uh, but you will have a data that have. Uh, that have many rows that can tell you why the based on the distance why the order is being rejected so with the distance affecting it or not so uh, in, in real life you will deploy uh, drivers into different locations so in a delivery scenario what you will do is you will deploy drivers in a different location so for example uh, if you if you deploy dri 10 drivers in location X, you will have to deploy maybe five drivers in location Y. So you will understand this, but you will, you will get into this decision based on that part, based on that uh, variables you have, or based on the understanding you get from the causal graph. So for the variable being, for rejected variable, what are the most, uh, the most prominent uh, playing features so for example it might be distance it might be uh, time of day it might be uh, also it might be if it's weekend or not it might have something to do with the weather so you will have to uh, even weather alone is a huge parameter but you can actually take all this and try to understand it in that way and also for the fulfilled one you can just accept the part and also can see the effect, the effect of it from the distance perspective and also from weekdays perspective and weekend perspective. We just you just have to work with uh, what we have. So since we have a very limited data, based on that, we we want you guys to understand what was what is the relationship between or what is the causality of being fulfilled or not, and also you can come up with another uh, variable in future. What what is the causality of being rejected or not. Um, is that clear, uh, Abu? Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, somewhat. Uh, also, uh, when when doing the causal index, uh, from from what I see, I might have got uh, more information on this, but uh, yes, it shows us the causes using uh, direct graphs so arrows and something so what what actually i'm curious about is uh, is that do we know by how much those variables affect the uh, the, the ones that is directed to or which ones are affected like by how much by how much is my so for that but you need uh, an industry experience uh, expert so for example for this one someone who actually uh, worked in that company would uh, actually understand the data more than us so for example while while uh, you show them the graph oh, they, they might say no it doesn't make any sense so uh, the graphs you come up with might be uh, might be so uh, the senseless so for example uh, let's say you come up with uh, a code a, a graph that is directed to fulfilled and it has uh, weekends 
So is weekend or not? So the only uh, the only variable that affects the order to be fulfilled or not is is the variable if the date is weekend or not. So when you show this to an industry like an expert in that matter, it won't make sense because uh, there are other variables that has, that has to be considered here. So, but since we only have uh, limited data, we just have to uh, work with that with that and to avoid. Uh, of which the outliers specifically. So mostly we need to have, we need to clean the data uh, extensively because uh, we, we don't have an industry expert here. So now we have to work with what we have. So we, what we have is uh, a limited data. Uh, does that answer your question? No. Uh, yes. Yeah. Mm, yeah. I have actually. <coughs> sorry, I have actually seen uh, on the documentation. So one of the thing it mentions is also instead of relying on domain knowledge, we can use the. I think the a model. I think some kind of model. So. It says as as the number of variables grows, or when the domain knowledge doesn't exist, it can be tedious to define in structure manually. So we can use uh, it says we can use Cosa next next to learn the structure model from the data. So yes, uh, one of the exercises it made uh, it used actually was it shows uh, the education. And then the child's education aff affected the mother's education. So, from common sense and uh, domain knowledge, it discarded that that uh, direct graph. And so, I think yeah, you are right. So maybe we should be doing more in, uh, on our domain knowledge. But also, uh, my other question is, uh, can the model also uh, show us the how much likely this is, or do we have to just use the model's output? Um, again, I'm not actually sure what the model output is. OK, so I, I think I'm back. I think that, that part is really the model. You can't do yourself. So otherwise, then you don't need a model, right? So the last time also, I decomposed it into two. The first part is the graph. The graph is just a simple connection. Like it has nothing, it has no, it's not weighted. It's just a connection. The causal graph doesn't, it's just about connections. What goes into what and what affects what. And then the model, the actual, from that on is the actual causal inference model. Then it, given that and the data, <clears throat> it estimates using an actual Bayesian statistics will compute the weight of the graph that one you don't do you don't even think you can only assume like if you are doing there it's just only range and you know it's called priors you can give priors for example how much you expect but that's if you had that's again still supposed to be to come from the data right it is mostly like let's imagine you have done the same causal graph before and some you have now a distribution around some weights and you can use them to be part of the you know as a it's called prior but normally you discretize those things and you give them like a range right so okay it's from this range to that range and if it's a categorically say like it, it's just only this number of categories do you do you get it like i mean is that clear so that yeah. part is just a mod when we say modeling it's just a model that part is a data part. Okay. So, uh, like, notiers, notiers, I think, I think it's pronounced notiers. Yeah. So, notiers have, uh, is, a, is it an algorithm or a model? It's just a framework. Like, it's basically is uh, implementing, like, the causal inference model. So, the, the, when we say model, this is a, more of a framework. 
So there is a like a causal inference model, which is more of a statistical model. And just like random forests being, you know, random forests, and you can implement them. The algorithm is the model. And then the implementation, you can say like, yeah, if you, if you use some scikit, that's more of that. So it's a framework. Okay. So the, from, from my understanding, so the output from Notiers would be uh, relevant features to use on our model, right? Yeah, okay, so I, I'm, I'm, so the, again, as I said, you have to decompose it into two. The graph, which is very different from the model weights. It's more like the graph is an architecture in deep learning sense. You know, how many layers, how many things, you know, which which layer do you put and wh which um, activation function do you use? Those are called like the architecture. That's in this case, it's called the graph. So the graph, you have to distinguish it from the training and estimating the weights. So most of these formalisms can give you both. So if you don't know, if you don't have an architecture, they give you an architecture from the data as well. But that's not what we want, right? We know that that is usually not uh, what we want, like because it's just simple correlation it uses to estimate what correlates to what possibility. It, it has an algorithm in that as well, but let's say that's slightly less optimal. While once you have a good graph, then they are okay, they are, they are good. So, so I have I have I have also seen that they have the graphs have a threshold. Yeah. So the, I mean that, that's again still doing a graph. When you're trying to estimate the graph, you have to first you have to do when you define an architecture, you have to do learning as well. And so you threshold it until you find something a stable graph. But still, it's all all of that before it's that there is a process to construct a graph. Let's call it step one. For every causal inference, you need to, and you don't need to do that if you know if you are or if you have already a good domain knowledge, you can construct it yourself. Okay. Yes. So, uh, as I said earlier, have like con constructing ourselves maybe tedious or uh, uh, forget okay. tedious. Tedious is not yeah. a good time because if you have to do it, you will do it. That's okay. what is uh, called. So, that's what is called. You know, you just garbage in, garbage out. If you believe something that automates for you, then of course it will automate. But you have no idea, right? Yeah. But you could be, you could do some mix. If you haven't, if you are not that much in a domain knowledge, then it will estimate for you. But then you also add it yourself by hand. Okay, you know, you accept some and you remove some. So it's called pruning. You prune your tree your graph and you add some things that make sense as well okay so uh, how do we know if our graph is good enough for example the yeah. threshold is you don't know good. unless you, you don't know no. unless you i mean so there are certain metrics like the stability metrics that are defined like between as you increase or as you change stability the jacquard similarity and others, but they are just indicators. So you have to look at your graph and ensure it's better to start from something that, even if it's not complete, even if it's a simple graph, but something that you are, you you can defend. So, so the only way to to actually know would be to test it on the drivers and everything. Yeah, right. to test it is exactly to, to do lots of tests and yeah so as you get experience it you get you start getting seeing accelerating but for now just don't accept i would not say just i would say don't accept just what is given to you automatically because you don't understand anything then so the whole point is just that ada you did is just to do this to help you get this I hope that answered your question, Abu Bakr. Tamaskir. Or Japes. 
Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so uh, one my question is one. Uh, after we uh, have the civil uh, graph, yeah, uh, I think we have to do interventions. Yes, to uh, to answer yes. the questions. Yes. Uh, how do we do that? Do we uh, change the formalism uh, itself? Will give you when you say just do, you know, just if you look at if you normally what it means is that, you know, basically it's like a flow, right? So each of them, when the probability flows, they go up or down. Now, interventions in a normal, simple way means instead of setting the probability to zero, for example, it's a, a negative intervention means to set it to zero, a positive intervention is to set it to one, roughly. So that means you assume that is not anymore. Anything before it doesn't matter anymore. It's something like that. So it's much more the formalism handles that because probability is you know conditional probability. Maybe do we have a probability uh, tutorial? Uh, no. Okay. Maybe then I should give that one. So the probability. Uh, part is that's called conditional probability. When you, when you have conditional probability, you assume probability of, for example, normally any probability in anything that you have seen, it may not be explicitly written, but it's almost always conditional, which means what is the probability of raining? Now, you are assuming that's called implicit information, given the information you have, right? So that given is the information you have. So almost all probabilities are conditional. So now in this case, what you are setting is that you are setting the probabilities. Interventions means setting the probability such that the conditioning means like given like what is uh, the drivers. For example, if you want to intervene on the drivers, uh, if no driver, if, if every driver is accepting when they see it first, then the probability of rejection the probability of re, you know rejection given that there is order becomes you know zero so it's like that it sets that and then recomputes everything the graph and then it estimates then how how much now you have improved so that's called intervention and these are called do calculuses and they are just in a, in all of the uh, the framework you, you know there are examples of how to do that Is that clear, Japes? Uh, yes, a little bit. Uh, how, how do we actually do it on the uh, code part? I, I mean, it's the code uh, do, like there is just called dot do, a method. Okay. Just if you look at them, the, like one of the examples, you would know. Just there's just dot do, dot something, dot something. Yeah. Okay. And, and so, I was exploring also the do I. Uh, yeah, uh, it's never, similar. There, there are many, they're similar with, you can choose which is easy and based on, you know, they, they have strengths and weakness in, in how they implement, um, you know, it's basically XG boost versus, you know, uh, scikit something, some like, you know, different formalisms for rain, for let's say random forest. And their implementation makes it sometimes stronger, sometimes weaker. So that's more or less they're the same. Okay, and one one last question. The, uh, I thought uh, for um, the, there might be. Uh, uh, I'm sensing that there is no such thing as casual discovery, uh, giving a data to uh, uh, to our model and the model itself uh, discovering the casual relationship. Is that it uh, or? I mean, they, there is something, and algorithms don't, don't generalize because there's so many algorithms, so many people that are clever that devise algorithms. So they're not just for nothing. In a certain sense, it holds. But just the causal, the actual, whenever it's sensitive data, you don't trust most, you, you check if it makes sense or not. And whatever is not clear you read your research for example and if it doesn't make sense so you can think of it as a prompt suggestion the cause the graph construction phase one part of it is a much more complex process because it involves understanding you know what 
causes what and you know so that's where the heart of it and after that is the data so yeah if you just, if you just accept automatic things yes it's just makes sometimes it might be very very bad of course the algorithms are smart they try to do something but still so complex that it's they are very hard to do especially for a complex data is that does that answer your question Japheth? yes yes thank you no abu Bakr, you had your hand but that's uh, you you want to ask uh, yes i think but I, this is not related so i think michael could okay. go Michael. I thought I would go next. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so in the data set, we, we have the rejected, even even if the driver rejected it, we have the, their, uh, their uh, latitude and longitude. Yes. So, and from the, from the other data set, you can find the trip origin. So based on this, we can find the distance from the drivers up to the customer or the parcel, right? Yes, the, uh, yeah. from the request point to yeah. the driver either who accepted it or who rejected it, you know. So if you find that, for example, we we will say uh, because it, it is far, up, far away, the driver rejected something like that. So how can, isn't this the correlation, not the core? No, that's just, that's just data correlation means without doing something that's assumption you just have to do it estimate and graph and eda and everything that's it so because with one just only sample you can't know that it may be for the, because it's far maybe it's it's not because it's far it's just because there was rain no it was because there was the traffic no because the person really didn't like the person so you have no idea. So you just pick like one parameter. Yeah, so you, pr you transform and you enrich your data by saying, OK, for each of them, I calculate the number of rejections within a certain distance. And then I use that one as my data. And then I do some EDA. And I do some other modeling. And I do something, something. So that quick calculation, quick impression of you know you have to really resist you have to really resist that's where the learning will will go as well of course almost everyone thinks i mean i can ask you one question very simply um maybe like let me ask you just because you are speaking michael maybe let me ask you one so um guess my brother's birthday the date i don't know june 7th okay. june 7th <laughs> Okay, it's either uh, June 7 or July 16. Do you change? No. Why not? I don't know. I trust it. My God, maybe. You see, like, that's a completely like most people would choose like that, but that's called you are, you're not even thinking statistics, right? So, can someone argue can can someone just um do you change if you were michael and why again more from a statistical perspective yeah Tamaskar. well from the choice that i had it's yeah. just a guess so, so what does it mean of guess? i know yeah exactly yeah what does it mean the probability of that happening is uh, unlikely. It's, it's, it's just, I chose it because it ju it's no, no, just. So what is the probability? Quantified. Quantified? Uh, uh, one out of uh, 360. Yeah? Exactly. Okay. Okay. So now I ask him either his choice, not, June 7 or July 16. I'll, I would change it July 16 because. Why? If my guess was true, yeah, I think I think I would have, I would have already gotten the the, the answer. Oh, oh. 
I do. Okay, maybe, maybe hand up. You can try. Are you well, almost there? Yeah. The oh. yeah. Okay, so uh, I would change the answer because uh, the first answer has a probability of 1 over 365, and the second answer has a 50% chance because there's only two choices. So it's. Is it just 50%? Yeah, yeah, I mean. The, okay. the, it's one of two days, right? No. Okay, so that's good. Close enough. Let's see. That was good. So uh, it's going to be one out of 334? Or the, 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 odds, the odds will... Yeah. I mean, you again, let me stop you so that because it's not right. It is 364 over 365. The probability is almost one. So the reason why that is the case, it's because earlier when you chose one, you split the, the, the year into two, your choice and the rest of them. So that means the 364 days versus yours. Yours was 106, you know, one over 365. The second one now is collapsed to just one, that 364 days, from the 364 days, I chose just one. So that means it represents now the probability of that one is just 364 over 365, so almost one. So Michael not changing is the, uh, this basically the most craziest thing you have probably ever done. Because it's almost like you're saying, zero versus you know you 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 chose zero over one does that make sense michael no so what if you you gave me like five choices so then it would have been those 364 would have been five right so then represented by five okay. so so this is this is the most this is what i'm saying statistics is not normal we're not, our brain doesn't work in a normal statistics way. So you have to be, usually, you have to be careful. Don't at all in statistics feel, just get, you know, your feeling. Your feeling is absolutely wrong. I can tell you for certainty, given that there are many people, many research that has been done, many of your thoughts are wrong when it comes to statistics because we don't think in statistical sense. So you have to be careful, you have to think so many times earlier was what we said, for example, oh, that's because correlation. So yeah, why not? These things, they seem okay, but you have to be almost always think back. Maybe, maybe you know, I'm not good. I mean, we're so good for intuition of other things. For example, reading people's perception. When people are sad or when people are, you know, not sad, happy, these things, we are much more trained. Evolution has trained us of course, to really pick up things. That means our experience, our parents, our parent, parents, whatever, has been living that. And they have taught us either by nurturing or by nature. But statistics, not. So it's important to be careful and to really read and become systematic and scientific when it comes to statistics, okay? So it's not you, Michael. And I have asked this thing for many times. It is almost the same answer. When people don't think, that's what they usually, because they, they like to trust. When it's now reduced to two, they just like to trust their feeling. But that's really a, a good demonstration. That's exactly, it's insane how you could be right. But then you still, like, and that's how what we do every day, right? So, um, so it's it's just an illustration, okay? In the case, why do we rely? Because domain knowledge are not statistics. They are our experience. They are scientific. So in a way that it's, you're, it's not a statistic. It's not, you didn't, with a domain knowledge, you didn't guess, you understood. You used many of your tools to understand. Right, so it was not it was not like the same question in the bucket. 
Okay, uh, it's, uh, it's a really interesting topic to actually explore. So I, I, I also had seen some, I think it's a YouTuber, uh, Ferris ITM. So he asked the most domain expertise to predict uh, like uh, some near future outcomes. So almost all of them failed. That, that's yeah, why. And predictions are statistics, but experience are not. So predictions are basically, and especially predictions that are scientific, if it's physics, it works. The sun will, you know, will come at the exact time that, that the theory predicts. When it's scientific, it's different. When it's human multiple factors, the, cre the you know, Bitcoin tomorrow, the price is very different because there are many vari variables to it. So it, you have to distinguish also between that. It's just being careful. It's like, what is experience and what is scientific? So the, the usual sense is called scientific versus non-scientific. Yeah. I understand now. So I have a, also another question on the data. Yeah. So, okay, shall I continue? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things i when i explore the data the wizard data was to add or not to add something so there are different types of weather conditions from what i've seen so there is like foggy light rain heavy rain in just freezing rain or something so uh, does this make the model better to add those or just to say rain or no rain yeah. I think I think this you can consider them categorical. They are they're not gonna be more than let's say six, ten. So it's fine. Yeah. yeah. So it's it okay. Should so be adding them would be better would would be better. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Okay. So normally, you know, these are like you reduce the categories to reduce computation. But other than that, it should not. Or if you have less data points, you also reduce the category so that it you don't uh, underfit, uh, so overfit. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. I mean, I, I think I hope that people are getting like, and you can ask. And as always, you can always just if you have questions, you can call a Q and A. And the most important part is just to learn every day. And those people who haven't spoken, just almost always try every time to ask. So, yeah. Abu Bakr. Apologies. Uh, so, yeah, no, no. I, I, so there is no apology for asking, question. Okay, so it's it's this is not actually a question. So when will be the like the probability class? Is it this week or next week? I Just, think I I I want to give tomorrow. So let's I will uh, inform like just I will schedule I will see my time, and I will um, inform Rodas so that she can set the time. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Excellent. Thank you, guys. I hope that was useful. Um, yeah, then we can stop here.